Hi everyone, it's Tanya from Tanya Krause Horsemanship. Today in the session with Tanya, what we're going to have a look at is teaching our horses how to accept and be confident in being sprayed. A lot of you would know that uh, a lot of horses have a lot of trouble with being sprayed. Uh, it has, uh, it, you know, it can get the horses jumping around on the end of the lead and uh, it can be a little bit dangerous if they start striking out or kicking out at the spray bottle. So what I'm going to do in the session today is show you how I personally would teach a horse to accept a spray bottle, uh, the things I take into consideration and why I do it the way that I do it. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can do this process or teach your horse how to accept a spray bottle. Uh, what my philosophy is that I'm trying to preserve the horse during uh, the process and I'm trying to build confidence. I'm, I'm not here to shut the horse down and tell the horse that they can just stand still, accept the spray bottle and that's their lot in life. What I want to do is teach the horse uh, that it's fine, it's not going to hurt them and so they can be confident in accepting the spray. So the first thing that I consider when I'm talking about spraying is that what we're touching on is four of the horse's senses. So while they're being sprayed, they can hear the sound of the spray coming out of the spray bottle. Obviously it makes a squirting sound. They can hear the liquid inside the bottle. They can see that I've got something in my hand that's pointed at them and they can also see the mist coming out the end of the bottle. They can smell the particular spray that's coming out, depending on what I'm spraying. Um, you know, it can, sp it can smell quite strong. So a lot of fly sprays have citronella or something like that in them. And a lot of the medicinal sprays have, um, you know, a compound in them that makes them smell quite medicinal and pungent. And finally, we've got the um, touch sensation. So when the mist actually lands on the horse, they, it stimulates their nerves and they can feel it sort of down their body. They can feel it landing on them. So I've got two spray bottles with me and the first one, the blue one, what I've made up in there is I've just put water in it. And the reason I've done that is so I've removed the, um, I've removed the smell compounds from the water. Uh, and the, the other reason that I do it is that it, I can waste as much water as I like in terms of spraying it out the end of the spray bottle. Uh, you'll see during the process that I do spray a lot of the spray into the air. So, you know, using a, a, an expensive fly spray to do that, I'm, I'm going to waste quite a significant amount of this liquid. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do it with the water first. But primarily it's to remove the odour. Uh, and then the horse only has to deal with each thing, um, one thing at a time. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show her the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and put the fly spray down. And I'm going to start with my water bottle and I'm going to show her the water. And when she reaches out and touches it, I'm going to take it away. So what we normally do is we let the horse smell something and then we go ahead and we try and put it straight on their body. And some horses are going to accept that and some horses are not going to accept that. They're going to um, sort of try and back off or whatever. Just because I've smelt something doesn't mean that I want you to put it on me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let her smell it. And then I'm going to take it away. And so she's getting used to the visual of the bottle and she can hear it a little bit. She can hear the water splashing around. Now, obviously, once I start spraying it, that's when the real um, sound's going to come in, the sound that bothers them. A lot of people will say it sounds like a snake. I don't know, maybe it does. Uh, I think it just sounds like something foreign to the horse and the horse thinks, well, that's strange to me, so I don't want anything to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spray it in the air away from me. And it takes up the water. There we go. And you can see that she looked at it. She didn't move her feet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm spraying it away from her. One, so she can experience the sound without me pointing it at her and, and without the liquid landing on her body. And what I want to do is continue spraying it in a slow, rhythmical fashion. One, two, three, four one two three four and if i keep it that same consistency she's going to relax because she's going to start to understand that that's going to continually happen and nothing's happened she she hasn't become injured by it it hasn't um, frightened her in any way so as you can see now she's starting to relax there's a lick and chew she's even reaching out to sort of touch me um all which is great i stopped that's why she reacted to that first pump 
and that's pretty good. So I'm spraying it away from her. Uh, she gets to hear it without having to worry about something touching her on the body. So I'm going to go ahead and start spraying it now and I'm going to walk from side to side. Now I'm still spraying it away from her and I'm kind of keeping my body in between her and the spray. So now what I'm doing is I'm desensitizing her to it, it coming from a different place. It's coming from beside her body. I don't actually mind that she moves her feet. I'm not going to restrain her in any way. You can see that I, I don't really have a feel in the rope and I'm not, I don't have it tied up or anything like that. She can move. I'm just going to correct her when I need her to stay in front of the camera. Good. So I sprayed it away from her and then I reached in and, and touched her and rubbed her with the spray bottle. So I'm going to pause for a minute. The whole point of this process is that I want her to relax during the process and I want her to be comfortable. So whilst I might have a time limit and whilst I might be thinking, oh, I don't want to spend 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour, however long it takes for your horse to become okay with the bottle, what, I'm, what I need to do is put that aside and go, well, it's not about me. It's about her telling me when she's getting more and more comfortable with it. So there she's reaching out to touch it. She dropped her head. You saw the little shake of the head and she licked and chewed. So I'm going to um, hold it away from her again. And there she didn't even react when the spray happened. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start walking with it again. And I just put that other hand on her for reassurance. And what it does as well is that other hand for reassurance is if I try and hold her and restrain her, I give her something else to worry about. I give her some other reason to go, I can't get away. I'm really bothered by this. I can't get away. This is obviously something that I'm really not going to like because my owner is trying to hold me in place. Well, I've got the lead on the ground. I'm saying to her, you can go. Um, as I said, I mean, I'll, I'll correct that because I need her to stay in front of the camera so you guys can see the process. But really, uh, if she needed to move her feet or something like that, I, I'm not going to tell her she's wrong for that. That's her, that's her instinct. Her instinct says, if you're worried, go ahead and move your feet away from whatever you're worried about. So now she's becoming pretty, pretty okay with me being down beside her. And as you can see, I'm actually bringing the spray bottle a little bit closer to her. And as, as luck would have it, the wind is actually blowing the spray onto her. So I'm spraying directly behind her like that, uh, to, pointing to the back, sorry. And the wind is actually taking the mist and it's, it's landing on her body. So a happy little accident there. She's now felt the mist land on her and she was okay with that. This is looking pretty good. Oh no, she was a little bothered. So I'm going to rub her. I'm not going to stop her feet, as you can see. Good. And I'm not really going to stop the spray bottle. I might pause, but the pause is just to give her a moment to think. That's pretty good. She moved away from the spray when I pointed it right at her. I allowed her to back to where she felt comfortable. I continued the rhythmical pressure of the pump action and she stopped her own feet and she rested. I don't want her to ever feel like I'm, I'm holding her. That's why I'm just going to go ahead and loop it around her arm. She can come backwards towards the camera. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'm actually curving the bottle around and I'm letting the spray land on her. And there's the lick and chew. So you can see she's still got her head a little bit up in the air. She's still sort of saying, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, and really this process, 
whilst I would love her to become really comfortable with it and, and say, oh, I'm a spray bottle, I'd, I'd love you to spray me with that, um, you know, we're going to, during our, the course of our horse ownership, we're going to do things that our horses particularly don't like. You know, being sprayed, being wormed, having injections, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I'm not about not doing those things because the horse doesn't like it. And I'm not about forcing the horse to accept it because it's something that has to be done. I want to find some decent middle ground where I can show the horse Look, Dan, this spray bottle is not hurting you. I know you might find it uncomfortable and I understand that completely, but I need to get this spray on you, but you can stand still. I'm safe, you're safe, we're all comfortable and it, it doesn't have to be a big uh, hullabaloo. So I rub her, I spray away, then I spray towards the back of the horse. And she's blocking it with, the, um, with her head now which is her looking at it, so I really don't want to push her head away like that, just so you guys can see. So now the mist is landing right on her. I'm rubbing her with my other hand. That just gives her a little support. And now I can go ahead and start spraying her. And that's pretty good. Um, you know, you could do this process over a, a series of... Um, days or even weeks if you don't have uh, i mean i can't even see what's that 11 minutes if you don't have 11 minutes to go through the process or if you've got a horse that is really striking at the spray bottle or something you might spend a whole week coming out with a water bottle spraying it in the air away from the horse just letting the horse hear it see it whatever walk away spray it in the air Walk away. You don't even need to have a halter on the horse, you know, unless you think they're going to actually attack you with the spray bottle. But if you think they're just going to leave, you just need to just walk around with it and, you know, spray your own boots. It doesn't really matter how long it takes because we're in the business of preserving the horse here. Um, you know, sure, I can tie the horse up or I can hold the horse and I can get the job done in 30 seconds, but I've kind of um, imposed my will, if you like. Uh, and I, I kind of feel like this is a, is a bit nicer process. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the actual fly spray, which is going to um, introduce a smell. Now I'm going to show her the bottle. And she can smell it there. So the difference with when I introduce the uh, product that has the smell, I'm not going to spray it in the air because if I spray it in the air, it is going to get in her eyes. It is going to get up her nose. It's going to be like, oh, wow, I really don't like that. Whereas if I just let her smell the end of the bottle, she goes, okay, this bottle's a little different. I can just go ahead, walk down beside her, give her a little rub, spray away from her once, and then I can go ahead and spray her body. I'm, I'm keeping this rubbing until she stops her feet. You can see she's kind of going, oh, I'm actually not a big fan of that. There we go. Good. Now, I'm not going to do a lot with this, with the um, fly spray at this point. Uh, this horse is actually quite sensitive in her skin. She's got pink skin under, underneath that hair. Uh, and when I have white fly sprays and things like that on her in the past, some of them have caused her skin to sort of come up in a bit of a welt. Uh, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to saturate her in the fly spray. Uh, and to be honest, that's actually a pretty good place to leave it. I'm happy enough. I can walk down beside her. I give her a little um, warning spray. Let's call it a warning spray. And I would even do this to my performance horse. You know, even my horse that doesn't worry about spray, I would give him a heads up and go, hey, this sounds about to happen before I just go ahead and point it straight at them and do it. So warning spray and then a little misting, good girl. A little misting, good girl. Ah, and again, you can tell that she's not particularly comfortable with it, but we're on a nice loose rein. She's not moving her feet. She's not trying to kick at me. She's not moving from side to side. Uh, so I think that's a pretty nice place to leave. Um, teaching the horse with the spray bottle, especially for a first session. 
Now, what you guys can do at home is break those, those pieces down day by day. You don't have to do it all in one session. We're up to 15 minutes now. Some horses aren't going to do it in 15 minutes. Some horses are going to be shorter. Some horses are going to take longer. Um, but if you always keep the fundamental principle in mind of putting the horse first and building the confidence and building the trust, it really doesn't matter how long it takes because, you know, we've got these guys for many, many years. Most of us own our horses for such a long time. Uh, so, you know, really what's 15 minutes or a half an hour or an hour in the scheme of years and years and years of ownership? Uh, we're going to have occasions to, I don't have a lot of occasion to spray my horses. Um, you know, we don't use a lot of fly sprays or anything like that. They're, they're, you know, our paddocks or whatever. I don't know. We don't seem to have a lot of flies. Um, so we don't have to do it. But obviously for medicinal purpose, purposes, if they cut their leg or something, we're spraying them with um, purple spray or what have you. Uh, but it's always a handy thing to have um, in the arsenal because you never know when you, get, you are going to need to spray the horses. Uh, so if you have any topics that you'd like to see covered in the... Um, sessions with Tanya, please hit me up on social media and uh, I will see if I can uh, address it for you and, and upload it. So I hope that gave you all some um, good tips and a good uh, tool set of tools to uh, get your horse comfortable with fly spray or other sprays. Thanks. See you next time.